Chapel. If you're visiting today, welcome to you. Um, today I'm going to be reading some of Psalm 66. Make a joyful noise to God, all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Give him glorious praise. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. Because of your great power, your enemies cringe before you. All the earth worships you. They sing praises to you sing praises to your name. Would you please stand and worship with us?
died for me. I see his wounds, his hands, his feet, my Savior on that cursed tree. body bound in drenched in tears they laid him down in Joseph's tomb the entrance here by heavy stone Messiah still and all again with hope, with assurance. together. Heavenly Father, we cast our minds to Calvary where you bled and died for us, and we thank you for the blood that pays all of our debts. God, we thank you for the gospel, for the good news that you came and died and you resurrected on the third day. God, we love you and we love to do your will. Help us to do that. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Good morning, Hope College. My name is Charlie Peña. I'm one of the chaplains of Discipleship in Campus Ministries. Welcome all. And let's just give it another hand to our worship team today. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Well, I have a couple of announcements. First, I want to welcome all the seniors today. Thank you for coming, all the visitors. We are glad that you're here with us. I hope you're enjoying your visit today. Another announcement that we have today is that Today, right after chapel, we have the Greek celebration of the year, and we have pizza at Campus Ministry, so please come and join us and have a slide of pizza. 
uh, we also have uh, two more gatherings that you cannot miss at 8 p.m. on Sundays. So please join us on these couple uh, next Sundays. And with no further ado, I have the privilege and honor to present our guest speaker today. He's one of our beloved, beloved professors, and he doesn't really need an introduction. Let's just give a warm welcome to Professor BP. Thank you very much. It's a delight to be here. And again, my greetings to those of you who are visiting Hope. All right, uh, question time. I'm going to show of hands. How many of you breathe? If your hands aren't up, you're probably dead. <laughs> All right, how many of you drink water? All right, good. I'll be unanimous on that one, too. Come on, balcony, get with it. Let's go. <laughs> hands up. All right, how many of you uh, eat food? Again, all hands up. All right. Three reasons you ought to be earth keepers, right there. And hug a tree, by the way, because some of that oxygen in your lungs and body right now probably coming from the trees, that miracle called photosynthesis, and the algae in the oceans. We breathe, we drink water, we need food to survive. Three reasons right there to be an earth keeper. I want to uh, give you a couple more reasons. Psalm 104, the symphony of creation song. My slides are not working, Paul. <laughs> oh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> Muchas gracias. Thank you. Psalm 104. I'm simply going to read it. And so listen and watch. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. O oh Lord, my God, you are very great. You are clothed with honor and majesty, wrapped in light as with a garment. You stretch out the heavens like a tent. You set the beams of your chambers on the waters. You make the clouds your chariot. You ride on the wings of the wind. You make the winds your messengers, fire and flame your ministers. You set the earth on its foundations so that it shall never be shaken. You cover it with the deep as with a garment. The waters stood above the mountains. At your rebuke, they flee at the sound of your thunder. They take to flight. They rose up to the mountains, those waters did, and they ran down to the valleys, to the place that you, O Lord, appointed to them. You set a boundary that they may not pass so that they might not again cover the earth. O God, you make springs gush forth in the valleys. They flow between the hills, giving drink to every wild animal. The wild asses quench their thirst. <clears throat> and by the streams, the birds of the air, this is a Kirtland's warbler, its uh, home and habitat is northern lower peninsula of Michigan. It used to be on the Endangered Species Act. It is no more because we've been taking care of its habitat. It's making a comeback. By the streams, the birds of the air have their habitation, and they sing among the branches. From your lofty abode, you water the mountains. Yes, that's me in a waterfall <laughs> on a canoe trip in Canada. The earth is satisfied with the fruit of your work. O oh Lord, you cause the grass to grow for the cattle, plants for people, to cultivate, to bring forth food from the earth, and wine to gladden the human heart. Oil, it's not petroleum, it's olive oil. Olive oil to make the face shine, 
and bread to strengthen the human heart. The trees of the field are watered abundantly. This is my youngest daughter, Sophia, um, attempting to hug a giant sequoia, Sequoia dendron gigantea, the largest living thing on our home planet. Put this one on your bucket list. You've got to see this tree. There's a whole flock of them in Sequoia and Kings Canyon National Parks in California. You've got to see this tree at least once in your lifetime. The trees of the field are watered abundantly. The cedars of Lebanon that you planted, this is looking up a giant sequoia. Those branches up there, 100 feet off the ground, are bigger around the branches than any tree in our pine grove. Really? Yes. <laughs> These would be the equivalents of the cedars of Lebanon in Israel, the giant sequoias. The trees of the field are watered abundantly, the cedars of Lebanon that you planted. In them the birds have their nests. The stork has its home in the fir trees. These are storks in fir trees in Israel. The high mountains are for the wild goats. Don't mess with this animal. Look at that goatee. Look at those horns. That's a wild goat also in Israel. And the rocks are a refuge for the conies. O oh Lord, you've made the moon to mark the seasons, and the sun knows its time for setting. You make darkness, and it is night when all the animals of the forest come creeping out. Don't mess with the badgers either. The young lions roar for their prey, seeking their food from you, O oh God. When the sun rises, they withdraw and lie down in their dens. People go out to their work, to their labor, until the evening. This is my midterm student group, 2017. My youngest daughter, front row in the pink shirt. She took it as her last course, uh, having just graduated from Hope College. This is the Adirondacks of upstate New York, six million acres of people in wild places. People go out to their work and to their labor until the evening. O oh Lord, how manifold, how many are your works. In wisdom, you've made them all. The earth is chock full of your creatures. And then there is the sea, great and wide. Creeping things innumerable are there. Living things, both small and great, like this beluga whale. There go the ships and Leviathan that you formed to play in it. The mythical sea monster. Here's a painting of Leviathan. These all all these creatures look to you, O Lord, to give them their food in due season. Here's another endangered species success case. Northern spotted owl, listed way back when the Endangered Species Act was first, um, first enacted. And uh, now they're doing quite well. All these look to you, O Lord, to give them their food in due season. And when you give to them, they gather it up. Yes, even those monarch butterflies. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. But when you hide your face, they are dismayed. When you take away their ruach, their breath, same word used in Hebrew for spirit, they die and return to their dust. When you send forth your ruach, your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the ground. May the glory of Yahweh, the Lord, endure forever. May the Lord rejoice. You, O Lord, rejoice in your works. You who look on the earth and it trembles. You who touch the mountains and they smoke. So I will sing to Yahweh the Lord as long as I live.
This is my most recent May term trip. You may recognize some of your friends in this photo. Singing praise as we're about to begin backpacking in the Adirondacks. I will sing praise to my God while I have being. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Alleluia. Praise the Lord. Very briefly, five things that this psalm teaches us if we have eyes to see and ears to hear. All things have been created by God. Everything in heaven and on earth is a result of God's creative activity. God speaks creation into existence. And this ordered world is not autonomous, autos nomos, uh, a law unto itself. It's not, but exists solely because of the continuous care of God, its creator and sustainer. All creatures are dependent on God for their existence and their flourishing. Third, God's creatures are valuable for their own sake. Rocks and trees, birds and animals have not only instrumental or use value, useful to us, but intrinsic value. They're valuable in and for themselves simply because God made them. And the human creature, mentioned only twice in this long psalm and sort of in passing, the human creature, we're one creature among many of God's creatures. And we humans are called to cultivate the earth in harmony with the needs of other creatures. In Genesis 2.15, Chicago police car verse on the side of every Chicago police car, serve and protect. Avad and Shamar. Planet. Fifth and finally, we humans are designed to sing praise to God. Indeed, the chief purpose of all creatures is to sing praise and glorify God, each in their own creaturely way. The giant sequoias in their way, the white pines in our pine grove in their way, the badgers, the spotted owls. Some things we can learn from Psalm 104. So here's my uh, most recent May term students doing some good work at Camp Fowler in the Adirondacks. And notice Cairo House. Cairo, the first two Greek words of Christos. This is the Christ house, in other words. We're planting trees. Something fun to do, actually. Pretty simple. Water those trees. Make sure they get some sun, decent soil. And as one person once commented, planting a tree is a work of hope because you'll probably be dead before that tree matures. Hope students, we have a lot of work to do, faculty, staff, to be servers and protectors and restorers of our home planet, creation, the earth. Let's pray. O oh God, we thank you for this earth, our home, for the wide sky and the blessed sun, for the salt sea and the running water, for the everlasting hills and the never-resting winds, for trees and the common grass under our feet. And we thank you, O oh Lord, for our senses by which we hear the songs of birds, see the splendor of the summer fields, taste the autumn fruits, rejoice in the feel of snow, smell the breath of springtime. Grant us, O oh God, a heart wide open to all this beauty and save our souls from being so blind that we pass unseen when even the common thorn bush is aflame with your glory. O oh God, our creator, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Shalom. Go in peace.